We call this the flying tank, but some designate it as a large helicopter gunship and attack helicopter. In this content, we will look at the features of the helicopter, the flight controls for basic flying and how it works. The two engines powering it, along with the basic differences between the variants, and last, but not the least, the weapon armaments that makes it an attack helicopter and how it works. The Mi-24 is in a class of its own. This is the only aircraft that is also the most commonly employed attack helicopter of all time and was used by as many as 60 countries and still operating strong as this export version. This helicopter is a response to the AH-1 Huey Cobra. The US Army's development and employment of gunships and attack helicopters during the Vietnam War persuaded the Soviets of the benefits of armed helicopter ground support, resulting in backing for the Mi-24's development. In the 1960s, it was used as an anti-tank or close air support rotorcraft, and because of its massive size and thanks to its large cabin, it could fit up to eight fully equipped troops. It also has a considerable assault transport capability. There are many variants, mainly the Mi-24A, which was the first production variants, and the Mi-24D, as well as the Mi-24P, also known as Isdali-243, which the NATO called Hind, but replaces the flexible Yak 12.7mm machine gun with a powerful 30mm Gruezev Shipunov cannon. But for now, we are focusing only on the Mi-24D, which has the most history and combat experiences among the variants. The flying tank has a length of 21.6 meters, including the rotor, and a length of 17.5 meter measuring the fuselage. It has a height of 13 feet 11 inches or 4.1 meters. It has a weight of 9 ton or 8500 kilogram, while empty at a maximum carrying weight of 12.6 ton or 11,000. 500 kilogram. We will try to cover the basic parts of this flying tank. The gunner also called the weapon system officer is seated in the front of the helicopter. This cockpit has been fully remodeled from its previous version. The pilot or commander is seated in the back of the weapon system officer giving him a clear view of the battlefield. A rotating turret with a four-barrel 12.7 millimeter machine gun is located just beneath the helicopter's nose. The major components of a helicopter are the fuselage, or the outer core of the airframe, is the main body part that houses the crew cabin passengers as well as cargo. The main rotor system is the portion of a helicopter that provides lift. A mast, hub, and rotor blades make up the rotor. The tail of the helicopter is located at the back, supports the rotor system, and is designed to stop the helicopter from spinning around when it lifts off the ground. Now moving back we have the power plant which uses a turboshaft engine called the Isotov DV3 turbine, which we will talk about in more detail. Now let us shift our focus at the front of the helicopter. This is the low speed precision airflow supported by an air data sensor boom and the last part of the object is odd rods IFF aerials used for identification of friend or foe. Now moving on to the more hidden and complex technology are the radar warning antenna that helps the pilot know if his helicopter is under the enemy's radar. Now let us look at this four-barrel machine gun which is called a Yak B 12.7 mm or in full form the Yakushev Borzov. The Yak B is a remotely controlled weapon. It boasts of a high rate of fire ranging from 4 to 5,000 rounds per minute, and is one of the few Gatling guns that is gas-powered rather than requiring an external motor to operate, with 1,400 rounds which is stored in ammunition loading doors. This is the forward-looking infrared and low-light television sensor housing. The sensors installed in forward-looking infrared cameras are used to create an image assembled for video output. This is the radar director unit associated with the AT-2 Swatter, specially armed for the Mi-24 helicopter. 
This helps the missile in guiding it to the desired locations. It is used for anti-tank operation. Let us look at the cockpit. First comes the circuit breaker. This is the left panel which represents the navigation and communication controls. Here is the left console panel which also houses the fuel system. Moving forward we have the left front console where it also houses a gearbox for the landing gear of the helicopter. Let us go to the front panel which houses the standard aviation control panel for helicopters. This is the altitude direction indicator which helps the pilot drive in the desired altitude level. Below we have the backup altitude direction indicator. As we move down we have the pilot weapons armaments panels. But remember this is the secondary weapon in comparison to the weapon systems officer in the front. Let us move to the cool things that help the pilot move the helicopter. And this consists of three components, the collective, the cyclic, and the tail rotor pedals. How a collective works. Pull on the collective. This will raise the swash plate, which will tilt the rotor blades at such an angle, indirectly increasing the lift force in the upward direction. Moving the collective down indirectly makes the swash plate go down. This will create less lift indirectly slowing the upward motion of the helicopter. This is the cyclic. It is responsible for moving the helicopter forward and backward left or right left or right. Moving the cyclic will tilt the swash plate and indirectly affect the rotor blades of the helicopter increasing the lift on one side. The pilot will only have to move the cyclic to the direction in which he wants. Suppose he wants to move sideways, all the pilot has to do is point the cyclic in the left or right direction. Now the tail rotor of the Mi-24 is on the left side. While here in the west, they are mostly placed on the right side like the Black Hawk helicopter. But for the Russian engineers, this was accidental as the directional control was not responsive enough. As such, that problem was solved by moving the tail rotor from the right-hand side to the left and changing the rotation, which enable it to exert more power. These are the tail rotor pedals that have a relationship with the rotor blades at the back of the helicopter, which helps the helicopter turn to the left or right. If we step on the right pedal, the rotator blade directs the helicopter to the right. If the pilot steps on the left pedal, the helicopter shift to the left. All that lift and rotation are being powered by these two engines, the Isotov TV-3 turboshaft engine. These engines suck in air from the front and heat the air for compression. This turns the turboshaft at the midsection. The main rotator blade will also be powered by the turboshaft engine through the tail rotor transmission shaft. All that power is being fed by five self-sealing tanks with a total capacity of 2,000 liters. If one of the tanks gets damaged, the fuel system could still function. While comparing it to the American Black Hawk, the Mi-24 helicopter is built like a tank. Let me remind you that this is an assault and an attack helicopter and is one of the few in the world period. Now let us look at the weapon system of the Mi-24. As discussed earlier, the Mi-24T carries the Yak 12.7 mm machine gun. Whereas the Mi-24E is equipped with a twin barrel gun, but the newer version or the export version that is Mi-34M also uses the Gryaziv Shupunov 23 mm cannon, but mounted in a chin turret at the center of the weapon system officer. Now let us look at the universal block rocket launchers that carry these folding fin aircraft rockets, known as S-5 rockets. Each S-5 rocket is about 4 feet 6 inches or 1.4 meters long and weighs about 5 kilogram depending on the warhead and fuse. The range of the missile is around 3 to 4 kilometers. Now let us look at the AT-2 Swatter, air-to-surface missile also called the Falanga missile. How does the missile work? The weapon system officer keeps the crosshairs of his sight on the target and the missile flies itself there. In addition, the missile has terminal IR guidance and a maximum range of 4,000 meter. 
Now this launch too can house the AT-6 Spiral missile or the newer version the AT-9 Spiral 2. The missile is also known as the 9M114 Kokon. It has a range of 400 meters to 5 kilometers depending on variants. Watch out for this Russian co-axial helicopter as well as this American attack helicopter so please smash the like and subscribe button to get more content like these.